figured I'd be a little ambitious. Uh, starting a couple minutes early, obviously I'll run the open and everything at 9.05. Uh, just wanted to let you know what's going on the next couple of days. And it is going to be power hour today because uh, the boss and I have to catch a flight to Washington, D.C. And so tomorrow's show will be from a hotel room in Washington, D.C. I think it's a power hour. I've got to check the flight. Uh, Boss has a Christmas party at national headquarters. So uh, we're flying up. That's why today's a power hour. And also, I don't know if I fall asleep mid show if I if I went longer than an hour. So today's a power hour. And if uh, Nick and Jarrett drop by, great. But uh, we got stuff to catch up on. And thanks to uh, Jason and Maddie and uh, Bart and Drew for filling in. Uh, you're gonna they're gonna have more updates this afternoon. So this afternoon will be on tape. Tomorrow morning will be back to live. Tomorrow afternoon will be on tape just to get us through the week. And let everybody know where things stand. So we've got a lot to catch up on this morning. The uh, CONCACAF Hemispheric Extravaganza Extraordinaire uh, came up with their matchups. We'll go through that. We've got Champions League to catch up on. And probably might, knowing folks uh, might get into uh, college, uh, college football and high school football, considering that was where I was the last three days. And uh yeah, I fell asleep about 2 o'clock this morning. So when you do uh, 11 games in three days, and I finally get to take the makeup off my face, but I still have all of the, the hair stuff in. And so it's uh, been a bit of an adventure, but uh, it's always fun to do that at Mercedes-Benz Stadium indoors the whole time. And fantastic group of GPP, great coaches and storylines and champions and all that kind of stuff. So, uh no, it was so it was fun, and uh, Prem and Proper will be back tomorrow, chasing some one v ones, and we'll have them next week. It looks like next week we'll have uh, Bev Yanez, the head coach from Racing Louisville, in a one v one. We'll catch up with Darren Van Tassel down at Tormenta because of the uh, announcement of the Tormenta Unified team. Very very cool stuff there, and Pablo Hara, uh, Pablo Hara. I thought I was going to do Pablo for opening kickoff this morning, but since I went ahead and logged in early here for the pre-show, we'll talk Pablo for a second. Pop time at uh, you know, Pablo's time at Tormenta is done, and we'll welcome in Jarrett here. Uh, Jarrett, I figured I'd drop in a couple minutes early just because kind of like a pre-show kind of deal before I actually start the show show at 9.05 and do a power hour before I have to catch a plane. <laughs> The degree to which you have not stopped is impressive. Well, and, and well, much like, and, a, much like a shark in the water, if the water stops passing over his gills, he might just roll over. Basically, yeah. I, my goal right now is to get to the plane. Yeah. And so then when I get to the plane, I'll fall asleep. But yeah, this, the industrial strength lacquer that uh, Brianna Jones, our uh, makeup guru, has put in my hair over the last three days. You want to talk helmet head? It is helmet head, brother. It, it has not moved, and I give her full credit, but it absolutely plasters it down right on top of your head, and it really does make it look like this this thin layer of stuff, you know? Hey, it looked good, though. I mean, you, you're running around the uh, the entire stadium for, what, a, eight? Boy, eight uh, Eleven. Fo- uh, eight football games, eight boys football games, and then three flags. Yeah, three or four flags. Yeah, three three flags. Flags. yeah, one a day. Yeah, and so that was where uh, that started. So yeah, eleven championships in less than that was like sixty four hours or something like that. So that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, fine. Yeah. So power hour today from Washington D.C. tomorrow. Uh, afternoon stuff today and tomorrow. Prem and proper tomorrow. I've got to warn Maddie and Drew to cut their segments. So uh, let's see. Today we'll talk Champions League. We'll talk. Uh, Tonka Chaos Hemispheric Travaganza and uh, anything else that's going on Major League Soccer and all that stuff. And since it's 9.05, I guess I should run the Open, yeah? Probably. All right, so I'll run the Open since it's 9.05. So uh, traditionally, this is how we start the show.
Bases dropped on a Thursday power hour. John here, Jarrett there, you there. Football season's almost over in a sense. A uh, week from today, it's National Signing Day. But uh, we're here for a power hour today because i got to catch a plane and go to Washington, D.C. for the boss's corporate Christmas party. And uh, so we'll be on until 10.05 and then packing things up and sprinting to the airport. But uh, plenty to talk about this morning. Opening kickoff, Jared, I wanted to uh, talk about a friend of ours. That's the, uh, that's the uh, QR code for my friends at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. Use the code soccer down here, 15, you get 15% off your purchase. They in turn take 10% reinvested into the Youth Game Youth Initiative. It's very, very cool stuff. From our friends at Kickoff Coffee and kickoffcoffeeco.com. Pablo Hara. Long time, long time, long time. He, he is one of the, the, the columns that was there to raise the temple that is Tormenta. Morning, Ricky. Pablo uh, announced on social media that his time at Tormenta had passed. And now he's going to be in Richmond with the Richmond Kickers next season. So uh, one, of the, one of the stalwarts of the growth of Tormenta has moved on. And it will be interesting to see uh, how you, you got Terzaghi. Now you've got Terzaghi and Pablo Hara and, and Neil Vignoles at, at Richmond. But now uh, Pablo Hara moving on. And it, it, we're going to catch up with Pablo next week in a 1v1. But interesting news out of League One to start from someone that we've been able to follow and see his growth uh, as an individual on the field and off over the last handful of years. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's, it's a time of transition for, for Tormenta. Uh, yeah. yeah. Sterling leaving as well mm-hmm. after you know, winning a trophy, just legendary playoff performances, uh, a former Spurs youth player. Scoring nine gazillion goals in the process. Yep. Um, still, I think <laughs> I think I think it's only like four goals, but still the most goals we've seen in the USL League One playoffs in the current format. Yeah. Um, it's it is a time of transition for Tormenta moving into a new era, and this is like if you looked at somebody's Wikipedia page, like a franchise's Wikipedia page, mm-hmm. this is where you would like start seeing the separations and eras. Yes. And where you would say, okay, well, now we move into a new one. And we try and equal or surpass the success we had before. Yep. And so it'll be uh, it'll be fun to see where Tormenta goes from here. Obviously, we'll catch up with Darren next week on the Unified team and that announcement. And we'll catch up with Pablo. We're, we're playing we're playing email tag with Pablo. And now that things have calmed down with uh, – uh, with with high school football, we'll catch up with Pablo next week. So it'll be a pretty it'll be a pretty busy next week. We'll catch up with Darren on the Tormenta side, Pablo on his Tormenta, and now with Richmond, and catching up with Bevian as a, up at uh, Racing Louisville as a part of everything. But yesterday, Jared, the Concacaf Champions Cup Hemispheric Extravaganza draw. Ten clubs in Major League Soccer in the expanded 2017 tournament. I had forgotten that they had expanded this. And, uh, the, you know, we're all sitting there and looking at, at folks and, and matchups, and we're trying to sit there. And it's like, okay, well, what if somebody went here? What if this team went there? What if this team went there? We now we now have our opening round matchups in the CONCACAF Hemispheric Extravaganza. And guess who gets to go to the monster's cage? It's Sabrisa. Our friends in Philadelphia. It's a lot to unpack from this entire <laughs> affair. Uh huh. A better word. Yeah, buddy. Um, because yeah, you have that. Um, Cincinnati, I think, has to go to Jamaica. Cincinnati's going to Cavalier FC to take on the Jamaica. Side. Going to, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Who's going to Jamaica? Yeah, Cincinnati's taking on Cavalier from Jamaica. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking. Uh, because uh, Orlando's going to Canada. They play, yeah, they're playing yeah, Cavalry. They're, they're playing. Yeah, they're, you got Cavalry to, and Cavalry. Not, not, yeah, they're not like going to Toronto or to Hamilton. No, <laughs> Orlando. So we have Cavalry and Cavalier. Yeah. So that's that's where we are because of uh, Cavalry's work in the Canadian Premier, mm-hmm. and so you're going to Calgary. So it is. Yeah. You're going to Calgary in the opening round of the CONCACAF Hemispheric Extravaganza. So Orlando to Calgary, FC Cincinnati to Jamaica. It's so cold, man. God, it's going to be so cold. 
Maybe they'll have Oscar Pereja to help them out. Oh, man. Oscar's going to be so angry, like the Grinch standing there at the end of the the, oh. end, the old Boris Karloff Grinch. Oh, just boy. Oscar standing there with his feet <laughs> freezing, looking just immensely pissed off. Like the, the nine layer overcoat, wearing the hood, arms yeah. tucked in, chin down the whole time, trying Your to face look. Face is pink from the wind burn. <laughs> oh my god! That that's the that's two of the seven. So Philadelphia gets to go to Saprissa. I'm looking forward to that one. That one's going to be a fun experience. And, and you know, so uh, I, I admit that I hope Rich goes. I really hope that Rich Ransom goes on this trip because you need to go to these trips. They're once-in-a-lifetime things because when we went to Herediano, mm -hmm. it literally is an experience going to San Jose, Costa Rica. I will never forget. You, you were playing on a welcome mat, and it was a fantastic environment. It's experiences you got to have. Uh, New England to Club Atletico Independiente in Panama. Vancouver gets Tigres. Thanks. Nashville gets Mocha FC out of the Dominican Republic, and their stadium looks amazing in a CONCACAF sense. And Houston lucked out. Houston in all caps in the opening round in round one. Look, somebody always draws the good lottery ticket with CONCACAF Champions League. Um, uh huh. And, yeah, all caps gets to go play Benny Ball, and that's, that's not really a blessing, though. No. I feel like Houston's just going to build on what they had this year. Um, all ca and, and, and look, All Caps is going to try and build on what they had this year as well, don't get me wrong. Um, but I feel like, yeah, that, that could still be kind of, that's more of the devil you know Yes. activity. Um, I'm still working my brain around Oscar Pereja just standing there freezing <laughs> to death. In the of, again, not Hamilton, not Vancouver, just Goram Calvary. Yes. Cal uh, yeah, you're going to go to play Cavalry in Calgary. Say that ten times fast. Uh, Toluca? Toluca? we got to put, we gotta put a team in Winnipeg next. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Toluca and Herediano. So that's going to be, you know, our friends from Herediano will hold, hold a, a, pl a place in our heart always. Ameri Club America and Real Esteli from Nicaragua. Chivas and Forge. So uh, you got Sivas, and it is uh, Forge is Hamilton. <clears throat> the Revs and in Independiente in Panama, all caps in Houston. T. Grace in Vancouver, Orlando City in Cavalry, Monterey and Comunicaciones out of Tegucigalpa, Honduras, Cincinnati and Cavalier, Nashville and Mocha. Then the round of sixteen, Pachuca gets the winner of. Of uh, Philadelphia in Saprissa. Robin Hood out of Suriname gets either Toluca or Herediano. You end up with uh, Club America at probably playing Chivas in the second round, which would be great. <laughs> Alawalense, our buddies there, uh, play the winner of the Revs and Independiente. Crew get crew wait for a round and then get the winner of Houston in all caps. Then you end up with uh, Tigres, Vancouver, Orlando, Cavalry, Monterey, Comunicazione, Cincinnati, Cavalier, and Inter-Miami gets the winner of Nashville and Mocha. Gee, thanks. I mean, man. Talk about easy. Good luck, everybody. Yes, and no KFC there. Have not been any Teen Titans jokes that have been missed in the first 10 minutes. Morning, four cards. So uh, that's, that, that is your CONCACAF update. Time to get CONCACAF and get acquainted with everybody when it comes to the CONCACAF Hemispheric Extravaganza in Wednesday's draw. Follow along at the Champions and CONCACAF on the Gram, the IG, or the Insta, or whatever the kids are calling it these days. Yeah, man. It's, uh, it, you know what? It, it, it shout out to like the fact that we were also, uh, those of us of the sicko persuasion, were trying to keep up with that. Also, the SEC schedule release for next year. Why now? Why why did Concacaf feel compelled to post? I mean, it's a, why 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 you know the SEC and Concacaf doing the schedule release at the same time? There's a certain sense of irony there about that here in this part of the country. I, or, or is irony the right word? 
No, I mean it's it it hits a very unique cross section. The the crossover here in the Venn diagram is not necessarily large, yeah. but it is just demented and unhinged. <laughs> um, personally, I'm looking at it because I'm trying to plot a trip next year down to Louisiana at some point. So um, I need to know. I have, I, have a, I, have a, I have a good friend of mine who is from uh, he's from northeastern Ohio originally. He's a Steelers fan. There's a non-zero chance the Steelers will play a game in the Superdome next year. Ooh. So what I'm thinking about doing is attempting to take him to a game in Baton Rouge. Oh, there you go. Better be a night he, game. Well, yeah, he went to Akron. And while, while this is a pro-MAC conference mm-hmm. uh, show, and yes. we, we, we appreciate the MAC. We love their weirdness. Absolutely. Um, and their insane desire to be as a, uh, as offense heavy as possible in the past um, with uh, Mac legend Bailey Zappi for instance <laughs> yes. uh, quarterback in Western Kentucky putting up 60 points a game yeah man um, I, I strongly desire to take him to a game in Baton Rouge as you should he, he does not he does not understand oh uh, and the idea being we would do that on Saturday and then we would follow it up Sunday driving east to the Superdome. There you go. All right. I see that. I'm, I'm down. I'm down with OPP. Yeah, I, I'm, so, I'm down. I get it. We'll see what happens. Like, I think yeah. he, hey, his wife's a UGA grad. I think he's gone to a UGA game. I, I, I need to. But this is also like, and I've told him before, like this is, is if you're going to live down here, I, 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 we're going to have to make the rounds. We're going to have to go to Jordan Air. No, oh, uh-huh. going to have to like, Go, we're gonna have to bite the bullet and go up to Knoxville with the ball, maybe at one point or another. Yep. Like you're gonna have to embrace all of these district cultures <laughs> that are just again unhinged. Yes, absolutely. Um, the, I'm not going back. No, I mean, <laughs> well, and neither neither is the boss because <laughs> the red stick not going back. Yeah, no, the boss has been a couple times, and the the times that she's gone. Uh, they have uh, her her alma mater, uh, the the Auburn Tigers. They have they have been blown out, and, yeah. and so there there is no desire under any circumstance to go back in these situations. And I get that, I, I truly do. So I get it. Yeah, and it's sorry you can't be tormented by LSU, USC, and Vegas. Just <laughs> and then Falcons, Raiders. God. Um, one thing I've never, I, I've made it this far, I've made it almost 35 years having never been to Las Vegas, and I, I'm going to keep that going as long as I can. Oh. Um, there's just nothing in Vegas that appeals to me. Yeah. Um, first of all, <laughs> second of all, Jaden Daniels won't be there, and Malik Neighbors won't be streaking down the sideline to catch everything that Garrett, uh, that, that Garrett Nussmeyer throws, so God only knows what that's going to look like. Um, as Brian Kelly attempts to salvage his job, <laughs> and I I really don't have any interest in in, in watching uh, watching whatever the Falcons are going to do, especially if it's you know another year of Arthur Smith and Desmond Ritter. Yes, absolutely. No, I'm 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 uh, no, I'm right there with you, uh, Kefsi. I am not going into detail about. Uh, uh, Kefsi, Kefsi is trying to, to get me to say things on the air, and I'm not going to because uh, Kefsi, and, and I, since I know the answer, I'm not going to say it on the air because that would get us the explicit rating. And boy, would it get us the explicit rating. <laughs> Kefsi asks, asks the Twitch pitch, what did John think that OPP meant? Hey, I'm 900 years old. I know the song. Yes, only plain pasta. That is absolutely correct, Kefsi. Congratulations. And yes, Hutch, Al Davis and Ken Stable would have been perfect for a Vegas team. And Ricky's going to Vegas. Oh, man. It works out. Stab- Stabler, like, trying to drive a speedboat across, a, across, a, across like, a, a giant fountain would have been. I don't know, something Stable, I actually, no, Stabler would have been going fishing in one of the fountains, drunk and at 3 a.m. Yes, he absolutely would. He, he, there's I'm wondering not, why he's not catching anything. Yeah, he, he'll, have, he'll be in his shorts. At the, at the fountain at the Bellagio, line cast in, cigar out of the corner of his mouth, wearing a hat, 
and, and just kind of and his bare feet in the in the fountain trying to catch fish, and it's not going to happen. And and, and he'll, he's wondering why. And it's like, you know, these damn waterfalls are scaring away all the fish. You know, when they do the the fountains at the top of the hour and they have all the explosions and everything, he'd probably be mad about something like that. So the, yeah, Stabler at the Bellagio, that whole group, Matuzak, Alzado, uh, Stabler, all of the, Ted Hendricks, all those guys. If you would imagine that in Vegas at the time, with, with the uh, the the certain influences and the ownerships at the time uh, of the the establishments, that would have been an amazing mix. That would have been the story. So someone needs to do a fictionalized version of the Oakland Raiders at the height of the Just Win Baby era in Vegas, and what that would have been like. You thought North Dallas Forty was a fun movie from Peter Gant? You do a fictionalized version of the Vegas Raiders with the the Just Win Baby era with John Madden. <laughs> Get out of the fountain, you know. Yes, Hutch is correct. Hunter S. Thompson would have recorded it at all. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> he would have been there, and it would have been amazing. Absolutely there's, amazing. There's just some people we don't put in Vegas. No. For, for multiple safety reasons. Correct. Uh, Champions League yesterday. Here's how the group stage ended over the last two days. Uh, Antwerp beat Barca in a game that meant nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of dead. Really, like, I'm gonna preface. I'm gonna preface everything you're about to, to go over. Yeah. By telling everybody that like, don't ever bet on dead rubber last day of Champions League. No. Because you're gonna get stuff like the Antwerp game, or yes. like it's dead rubber. Everyone is set. All four teams are set where they're gonna be. There's nothing that can change. And you're just gonna like you're gonna get weird results when teams kind of phone it in. Other teams are like, oh, we have to end on a high note, even though we're getting eliminated. I'm looking at you, Brendan Rodgers. You have <laughs> your, um, your explicit rating for the morning. Oh my god! I, <laughs> I, I told I told I told John and Jason and Nick yesterday that I wanted Brendan Rodgers to be devoured by radioactive crabs. I'll buy the crabs. I don't, I don't care. Just, just do it. Oh, absolutely. Anyway, yeah, don't, yeah. So don't bet on the last day of Champions League because no. you get weird stuff. Anyway, carry on, John. No, Antwerp beat Barca yesterday 3-2. Atletico beat uh, Lazio at a minus 156-2-0. Jarrett was referencing Celtic being Feyenoord. Yes, there's a lot of MLS to talk about. We'll talk about that in the second half of the show, including a local mention. Dortmund and PSG, a 1-1 draw to plus 330. Porto and Shakhtar, eight-goal thriller. Porto. Wins at 5-3, and I have to satisfy a curiosity here. If you had 7.5 as your total, and you went over 7.5, that was a plus 5,000. 5-3 final, Porto and Shakhtar yesterday. AC Milan at a plus 294. Newcastle had the chance to advance. Sorry, Alex. Sorry, Matty. Uh, they did not. They did not get out of group. They had their heart. Plus 294, AC Milan advances. Uh, they get the win. Newcastle was minus 115 going in. Milan wins 2-1. Manchester City with five guys named Joe and an 18-year-old. Uh, went back and forth with Red Star yesterday. Won at 3-2 on the road at a minus 164. Leipzig beat Young Boys at a minus 357-2-1. Going back another day. Copenhagen beat Galatasaray to advance it out of the group stage. At a plus 149. Inter and Rouse Sociedad a goal of straw. Bayern beat Manchester United 1 0. News on that coming up in a bit with Manchester United. There's some possible ifs uh, and buts and gossip rumor and innuendo. Uh, Napoli 2 0 winners over Braga. Benfica 3 1 over Salzburg. Real Madrid 3 2 over Union Berlin. Lens over Sevilla at a minus 108. 2 1. And PSV and Arsenal a 1 1 draw to plus 250. So that means. Your seeds and your winners getting out. Bayern Munich and FC Copenhagen. Great work by Copenhagen to wrap up 2-2-2. and Manchester United bounced out at 1-1-4 and four, and four points. Arsenal and PSV advance. Real Madrid-Napoli advance. Real Sociedad Inter advance. Atletico Madrid-Lazio advance. Dortmund, PSG advance. Goal difference means that Milan goes to Europa League at a minus three. Newcastle, because of the loss, finished with five points. They had it in their grasp. Manchester City and Leipzig advance. Game meant nothing for Manchester City. Barcelona and Porto advance, but the head-to-head means that Bar- Barcelona won the group. Porto goes in 
Shakhtar goes to Europa League. So that's where we are with all of that. Europa League is today, and uh, literally you've got to really keep an eye on everything. Head on a swivel day, last day of the group stage. So Roma, Sheriff Tiraspol, Leverkusen, basically everybody's either at 1245 or 3 o'clock. Everybody's playing. Leverkusen favored. Lusk favored at home on the plus side. Panathinaikos, a minus 154. Maca- uh, Maccabee Haifa at a plus 463. Carabag at 1245, big favorite at home. Wren, favorite at home at a plus 102. Royal Union, favorite at home against Liverpool. Slavia Prague, big favorite at home, hosting Servette. Three o'clock. Ajax, a minus 120 with AEK. Aris, big uh, dog at home. Sparta Prague, a minus 125. Betis, favorite at home against Rangers at a minus 106. Brighton at home, favorite against Marseille at a minus 141. Olympiacos, big favorite at home against TSC. Rakov, a favorite at home at a plus 104. Sporting a minus 141 against Sturm Graz. West Ham, favorite at home at a minus 109. What does this mean? We'll get there because I have to click a tab and it actually has to load and behave. So we'll see what happens if it decides to load or behave. And I can tell you what the standings are. And it might come in like a day or two as, as our buddies at Odds Portal are thinking about loading in a situation like this. But when it loads, we'll talk about it. Europa League standings eventually loading. So here we go. Group A, West Ham, Freiburg advancing. Marseille and Brighton advancing. Uh, once again, dead wood for matchups that don't that determine one way or another. Marseille and Brighton, one point separated. Uh, West Ham and Freiburg playing each other to determine who wins Group A. Both teams advancing. Group B, Marseille at 11 points, Brighton at 10. They're playing each other. Group C, Betis, Rangers, Sparta, Prague. Chaos. Keep an eye on Group C. Group D, Atalanta advancing, Sporting advancing, Atalanta playing Rockov at the bottom of the table. Group E, Liverpool advancing, Toulouse, Royal Union has a shot, but they've got to beat Liverpool in a game that means nothing to Liverpool and get some help, win big. Group F, Ren, Villarreal winning, don't know the order. Group G, Slavia Prague, Roma advancing, won't know the order till they play. Leverkusen advanced, games mean nothing, Carabag and Molde to, to determine who gets out in Europa. Europa Conference League, uh, look at that one on your own. Everybody's playing, and it's a mess. So there you go. That's your your update. Start watching at 1245, and you can get everything squared away. All right, Major League Soccer, now that we're here. Uh, I know that there was news yesterday as I was kind of blowing through and kind of keeping an eye on what's going on. Uh, Early stuff, I was seeing, Jarrett, that apparently there are early conversations Involving FC Cincinnati and Miles Robinson. I know I know that uh, a lot of folks here are keeping an eye on Miles, wondering what his future is going to be. But it early conversations, it looks like Miles is having them with FC Cincinnati here at the beginning of the free agency window. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested if we're going to get this sort of content going forward in the universe yeah. um, where, like, MLS starts turning into – all the other leagues yeah um where you know we're like it's free agency started so and so took their first visit to that team yep and then yeah apparently like you know uh sensi for miles or whatever the sign was that like clued everyone in that something was happening um that's kind of what i need in my life is that we get like this weird like and like team start just rolling out the red carpet um, <laughs> a always BBC Cruton, brother. Always be Cruton. Um, <laughs> we just start seeing them trying to close the deal. Uh, where you know, rolling out the red carpet for teams. I need this. Yeah, I need like, and I need it for like the most random people too. Like, um, we. I, I don't know if we're officially on the record for this. But we need to be on. I, I. I. I need to. I need to be on the record for. Hey, Atlanta. You might want to call Donovan Pines and see how he's feeling. He's a free agent. Yes. Um, DC didn't really finish his development, mostly because DC cannot open a jar of peanut butter without their hands blowing up. (laughs) I'd be interested to see if you want to take a flyer on Donovan Pines, who's an incredibly large, incredibly athletic human being. And maybe see what you can, maybe see if you can polish him up a bit. Um, you don't have to roll out the carpet and make like, make like the signs do their things. But um, yeah, man, give give me full crudin with, yes. with with MLS. I want like, I want like, the reporters 
to be reporting on it the same way that like uh, uh, this uh, the pitcher out of Japan who was who went to L.A. for his for his visit. Yeah. And like they had Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman and Shohei like <clears throat> on the front line. Um, I want that. Give me that. Well, and, and what we got, and I posted the link uh, in the Twitch pitch. Uh, Zach Blandford was outside of TQL Stadium. And TQL turned on their light show, and the light show says Miles for Cincy. And I don't think they're talking about either Rand McNally or Google here. It, it, it is not having to do anything with, like, mobile gasoline. So Miles for Cincy was Man, rotating around TQL. Man, wow. We're getting there. you just bringing – just, like, refreshing my brain to the existence of, like uh, – because when I – funny enough, when I think about mobile one – all I think about is the car that Jeremy Mayfield drove, and Jeremy Mayfield, who was banned from uh, from from NASCAR racing for yep. numerous drug issues. Yes. <laughs> um, man, nice flashback to the early 2000s. Next year, you're gonna tell me about the Kellogg's car that Terry Labonte drove in the late Yeah, 90s. buddy. Yep. Um, and the uh, the the Sterling Marlin Coors Light to Silver Bullet. Oh man. But I feel, according- bad. I feel bad for Sterling Marlin though, because that. that Coors Light Silver Bullet was the fastest car in Daytona on the last lap that when he ran into Dale. That, that did, yeah, it was I mean, absolutely. He, he had a hell of a car that day. Absolutely, but, uh, that's, that's very much bearing the lead of what happened that day. Yeah, it is. Jesus, like that, like <laughs> the reason Walter won is because Dale was blocking Sterling Marlin because if Sterling got around, he was passing everybody and their mother. Correct. Uh, a point that was made, and Michael Head has made this point. Uh, going to be a lot of gnashing of teeth, provided I could click the right one uh, when I advance the screen. Going to be a lot of gnashing of teeth when Miles signs with another MLS team for the same money as Atlanta United offers. But if, if he does, yeah, there would be gnashing of teeth. Um, but there's only there's... so much, according to Kyle McCarthy, there's only so much that teams in Major League Soccer can offer Miles. And, and, uh, and the reason I posted that in the Twitch pitch, Kyle McCarthy is referencing a section of the CBA from New, uh, from New England Soccer Journal. Kyle says this. FC Cincinnati or any other MLS team is limited in what it can offer Miles as a free agent based on Section 29.4 of the CBA. Robinson's salary is between max salary and max TAM and covered by 29.4 Section 2C2, 20 to 25 league years only. If the player's prior year's uh, salary number is more than 500000 above the maximum salary budget charge up to maximum TAM amounts up to 12.5% above the player's prior year, provided, however, compensation limits for all players is between 500 and 555 above the maximum salary budget charge, it'll be adjusted upward to end uh, maximum TAM. So it appears that there is a limit in the legalese of the of the of the CBA, that Miles can only be given a certain amount. Now the question is, does Miles' desire financially fit into that certain number, or does he want that payday? Because we've seen PSV is interested in Miles, and if Miles wants the payday, like I said, this is going to come down to what Miles wants. But if it comes down to his own desires and what he feels he is worth. And if he wants to go out West, uh, I mean, if he wants to go East, the, the other side of the Atlantic ocean and get paid more than a certain amount of money, then he would end up out pricing himself from age league soccer, unless he wants to stay and accept a salary figure of a certain level. So, there, there are certain things in play here. I posted the Kyle McCarthy uh, link to the CBA just as a reference point. So when it comes to Miles, a couple of different things in play. He can only make a certain amount. And if he wants to make that certain amount, cool, great, fine. If he wants to make more than that locked in amount because of the CBA, he's going to have to go someplace else. And because it is a party line, as always here on the morning show, Nick Alifi joins. Good morning, sir. I'll do it. There we go. There's me. There, there I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm, like, I need more coffee. I don't have enough coffee yet. I'm, you know. Yeah, I'm you can solve news. this problem. 
You can solve this problem just by never drinking coffee in the first place. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Uh, that, that sounds like communist behavior to me, sir. Well, <laughs> hello, just throwing that out me. there. <laughs> if, if me who does not drink coffee ever. <laughs> well, you know, you can just take yourself to communist Russia. <laughs> How about Do that? Have something other than coffee. <laughs> oh my God! Tepsi espresso pronto. <laughs> Good Lord! Uh, so we're talking about miles, right? Yeah, we are. Uh, we we have transitioned into free agency in Major League Soccer here for the final half hour of the Power Hour. But yeah, go for it. Uh, look, I think it's just time. If he wants to go, let him go. He had injuries at the wrong time. We could talk about the totality of anyone's career, right? But timing counts. If you're yeah. a UGA fan, you know this more than anyone, that you can be great 95% of the time. Mm-hmm. But if you're bad at the wrong time, it screws everything up. Yep. Right? So you can you can have an off day. And, and if and, you know, 90s Braves fans know this better than anyone, you can be spectacular all the time. But when it gets down to crunch time and you have that oops brain fart moment, it all goes sideways. And it's not just brain farts, but it's also injuries. Miles Robinson had injuries at the wrong time and it's affecting his contract now. So Atlanta offered him from what I understand, just South of a DP deal. Mm -hmm. If, uh, if if Doug Robertson is to be believed on this particular matter, Uh, what more do you want the front office to do? Do you want to burn a DP spot on Miles? I feel like it would be a much easier decision had you gone to four of them. Yes. Yeah, if you'd gone to that fourth DP, then I'm thinking that the decision would be an easier one to determine. But right now, since we are at three, you have to make your choices uh, you know, much like the, the night in... in uh, the, the Indiana Jones movie, you have chosen wisely. You know, that's what that, that's what you're at right now. That's right. And so it, it is. And that's and we we go through this when you have Lee. And this is any league, any favorite team. When you have leagues with salary cap structures. And we've right. been through this before with Atlanta United. What you cannot do, no matter what your favorite team is is you have to look at the totality of the roster and how it can affect your overall cap number. Because if you invest way too much and go disproportionately in one manner, then you can upset the entire balance of everything that you want to do within the salary structure of your particular league. And this is just another instance where you know Atlanta United is faced with a question But once again, you have to look at the whole and you can look at those who are coming in behind Miles as a part of how Atlanta United has grown itself from its academies through the twos. And you have folks coming in through the pipeline. And do you want to try and overextend if if that's your perspective on this? Do you overextend here? and continue to grow from within and have that hurt you in other places. And so that's something, if you don't have a salary cap, you know, like leagues overseas, it doesn't matter. You could spend your ever-loving ass off, and at the end of the day, it wouldn't matter. In a cap structure, you've got to look out for the collective. And as always, it is better to stop things a year, uh, a year sooner rather than a year too late. And Nick, to your points, I'm thinking that's what you have to look at as a part of the totality of your decision making. Yeah, the cap is real. I mean, I, I I watched I watched Milan hang on to greats for too long, right? And this is without a salary cap. And I watched the damage that that did to that team long term, holding on to people for too long. Now let's transition to a league where there is a cap, right? And you see this in the NFL all the time Mm -hmm. where they try to hold on to the legends for too long. England Patriots. Well, Well, not even that. was really good about the inverse of that for a while and then they stopped being good at 
it. Yeah. Right. But but look at the Saints, right? The Saints Ooh. held on to Breeze oh. for way too long. Oh. They kept pushing that that number, pushing that number, mm. and they're going to be in cap hell for the foreseeable future. Mm-hmm. But with Miles – there's there's talent there. I don't think anyone's going to argue with their, that there's talent, but no. what is the ceiling of the talent compared to the money that you're attaching to that, right? The 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 projected ceiling. Yeah. I don't think we're too terribly far from his ceiling now. Uh there may be a a little more give there. I would like to see what he could do in, in Europe. But it, it's you know I think it in, if he moves within MLS, mm-hmm. like if he says, okay, Cincinnati, this is where I want to be. Uh, you know, he can say that because of this past season that since he's a better situation for him, you know, he could say that, oh, they're maybe closer to winning a title than Atlanta. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but okay. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're in the world of make believe right now. The one thing I'm not going to do is aim at the franchise on this one. I'm not yeah. aiming at Atlanta the, at the front office on this because yeah. there was a deal there yeah. Yeah. for him. Mm-hmm. He elected not to take it. That's all I need to know. Yeah. Um, you know, if he, you know, if he comes out later on and says, uh, you know, yeah, they had a deal. I just felt like I needed to be in a different situation here, there, wherever. Okay, great. Happy to hear it. Wish you the best. But I'm not spending DP money on Miles Robinson, you know. I, I just don't, I just don't see that. I, I just don't see that working out, you know, to, in, in my opinion, but the cap is real and I'm glad that there are more people who seem to recognize that now than yeah. have happened previously, but, yeah. you know. Well, and, and uh, to, to Michael Head's point, you know, if there's blame to be assigned, it should be thrown at MLS salary structure and rules. I think that with all of the talent that, Messi and friends and Chris Henderson and the Moss brothers are bringing in as an example that you need to expand the cap. I think you need to add something. If you, if you're not going to add the fourth DP, then add something when it comes to the amount of money that is under the cap that you can fiddle with in whatever ways that you can. Uh, I think that the, the continued interest in bringing talent in, the continuing development of talent within Major League Soccer should give you this shining beacon of an idea of, hey, maybe we should expand our cap numbers to where it's not, you know, what whatever the numbers are, because off the top of my head, I can't think of them. But for me, you've got to expand your cap numbers so you can keep the talent that you're developing instead of having them go overseas for that payday. Because we've always talked about the different versions of Major League Soccer, MLS 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, whatever, wherever we are. Morning, Abby. The next stage in Major League Soccer is getting to that point to where you, you have expanded that cap number or you've taken shackles off in whatever form you wish, and you're keeping the established talent that you've been building yourself. They're electing to stay here in this league and not go apply their trade and have uh, Miles putting Champions League greats in their pockets like Kefsi's looking forward to, as we all are looking forward to currently. But that, that's that next stage here. Until you get there, you have to look at your collective. This is a Borg-like atmosphere that you have to look after here when it comes to Major League Soccer. And if you want to try and price yourself out of, you know, keeping, you know, keeping your, your address book stable, then, you know, it, it is going to be on you until further notice. Hutch, MLS salary rules remind me of the concept of magnetic furniture. It's all finely balanced until you sit in it or move a piece from one place to the next. Magnetic furniture. I'm sure that if I saw it, I would know what Hutch is talking about, but I will take Hutch's word for it. Magnetic furniture. I've never... it just, it's, it's one of the things that you have to think real hard about. Yeah. What, what are the fulcrums for you? Because um, I, 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 if I'm not mistaken, he wants basically what Walker, like Walker Zimmerman got, which, hey, if you can get paid, get that money. Yeah, um, absolutely. By all means, go get that money. But in a, when you get a capped league, it's just tougher to do. <clears throat> and you know, we, don't, we know that the offer's been on the table. We don't know where negotiations have been been if they've like reached an impasse where it's like here's the final offer if you sign it great if not you know 
we'll give you a handshake and let us know if you need a ride to the airport. Yeah. Um, and now and then there, therein comes the next question of what kind of offers would Miles have in Europe? And yeah. it's, a different, it's a different answer than it would have been in 2022 before he blows out his Achilles. Because it felt like that was, you know, the it, everything was going to be have a great year in 22, go play in the World Cup, get the move to Europe right after the World Cup. But it just didn't work that way. Now, what kind of deals does he have on offer in Europe? And here's the question you have to ask yourself if you're him. Do you care more about playing in Europe? Or do you care more about maximizing profit for your career? Because there's no guarantee that what he would get offered in Europe is more than what Cincinnati or somebody else here might offer him. It just depends on what he wants. Do you want the big money or do you want to get over to Europe right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that is that is the, the ultimate Miles Robinson decision. Uh, Niall, I'm not sure Miles is as good of a defender as Zimmerman, which is why I don't think he is a DP. So, Niall, uh, and Nick, to your point, you have to take everything that Miles has, has had happen to him for a double past participle verb. You mentioned the injuries. Obviously, I mean, yes, you're, you're coming off an Achilles. That should be a concern, all these kinds of things. I would think that would play into any executive, regardless of cap structure, salary structure, salary demands, or whatever. You're, you're looking at the totality of the evidence that, that wants you to build your case as to whether or not. Like I said, we've heard PSV. That we know. Cincinnati is going full-blown Cruton. And good on him for it because, hey, that, that's that's what we've seen. So, uh, Miles will be one of the more intriguing free agency questions here coming up in short order. But that's the beauty of this week is trying to figure out what this window might may look like and how you juggle your cap and what's the worth and all these kinds of things. So, let me, let me check real quick. Uh, MLSPA. Uh, uh, great. So, thanks for not – having saved my cookies when it comes to trying to figure out, okay, MLSplayers.org. Okay, so for the record, Miles, according to the MLSPA, made 1.4 in base salary, guaranteed compensation $1,437,500. Okay, so that's that's what Miles made. Walker, base of 1.8, Guaranteed compensation over $2 million. Guaranteed compensation over $2 million when it comes to Walker Zimmerman. So uh, just to to go by comparison here, I want to see, Nick, I want to see what Nashville's salary structure is with all of their other individuals and see where Zimmerman is as a reflection of their players. So, Sam Surridge is making $2.9 million. Wow. Okay. So, Walker's complete compensation. Uh, so, let's go base. Walker's base is 1.8. Surridge's base is 2.5. Honey Mukhtar's base is 2.9. Randall Leal is a million bucks. And that's it. I think all of this is moot. Uh, it's value. At the end of the day, it's value. And and the value of something is what you're willing to pay True. for it. Right? So, uh, you know, and there's, there's value and there's real value, right? And then the real value here is in Atlanta, he was offered a contract. Yes. Just south of DP money. Miles elected not to sign it. Mm-hmm. And it was on the table for a while. Right. So Atlanta put their number from a value perspective in front of Miles. And Miles said, no. Mm -hmm. And that's fine, right? I'm not mad at him. That's fine. You get it. But I would like to know what Miles thinks his value is. Yeah. Right? Because right now it's... You know, and I and I say the same thing about Julian Gressel, and I'm just going to go ahead and set the chat on fire right now. Sure. That Atlanta moved Julian without his input. DC moved Julian without his input. 
he was in Vancouver where apparently he was enjoying, you know, he, the team liked him and wanted to keep him around. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, he forced his way out and now Columbus has moved Julian Gressel without his input. Yeah. The value has been set. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, in Atlanta, amongst people in the fan base, that value is very different, but from a league perspective, that value has been set. It is what it is, Mm -hmm. you know? And so a player can have an idea of how much they're worth and with the value that they bring to the table, but that doesn't mean that's your real value, right? You could say my value is like designated player level, Mm -hmm. right? I need to be on the national team. I'm that good. And you need that confidence. Don't get me wrong. Your defensive defensive liability is what you are. Yes, he is. But, you know, you can say whatever you want, but when you have, when you have a trend of what happens to you, that's your market value, you know? And, and I, and I think there are a lot of players who at some point discover that and, And I'm pointing at Julian because he's a name that we all know and, you know, have, have watched over the years. But this happens to a lot of different players. The same thing's happening right now for Miles Robinson. Miles may say, you know what? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, it's a good idea for me just to get out of town. And Fourcard, Ahmed said this the same way, right? Fourcard, how you doing, baby? Uh, said, you know, it's also good to change scenery every five to seven years, right? And he may just be doing that. Like, look, I don't care what the number is. I, I'm just ready to bounce. You know, yeah. I'm ready to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go hang out in the battery anymore. So uh, let me go and find a place to, you know, to, to go and ply my trade. Good for you. A lot of this is going to come out in the wash, but, you know, this is, this is part and parcel of, of the life we've chosen by being a extraordinarily structured um, salary cap league. It's not even that there's just a salary cap. It's that there's all kinds of, you know, crazy machinations of, you know, if this, then this yeah. subtract to the square root of purple, you know, like great. But Miles is going to discover his real value here soon. And, you know, I, if he had taken the deal, there's nothing saying that he couldn't have taken the deal Mm -hmm. that Atlanta had on the table and said, great, use this deal to leverage getting a larger, (laughs) larger transfer fee. Control the asset. (laughs) Yeah. The contract is an asset you get to control, but the team could have been like, look, you can sign the deal and we'll still move you, but this allows us to get, more money for the great player that you are right you see this in europe all the time players sign new deals and that you know some people in the media go oh he's here for a long time no it's because the agent and the team came together and said look the larger transfer fee means more sponsorship opportunities for my player it's a higher level of prestige for my player it's better money for you the way we get there is by you by someone having control of the asset for a period of time and that means that people get more desperate and pay more money. There's nothing saying he couldn't have taken that deal through the season, balled out of control, and still been moving to PSV over the summer, yeah. you know, or the, the winter break, wherever. So it's you know, it's it's one of those things, you know. Yeah. And yeah, Michael, I think the the Atlanta United deal is still technically on the table. Yeah. But, Go for yeah. it. Yeah, and, and, and I, I I agree with Michael. Like, hey man, I hope he could, I, I think it's best. I would love to see him go to Europe because I want to see if he can do it. Um, because we saw in 2019, I think, man, we saw like the potential was through the damn roof on what he could be. He'll be t- he'll be two years removed from an Achilles injury, and we've talked about this before with injuries that when you're back on the field, it doesn't mean you're like you're back. Mm-mm. We we watched this in Atlanta. Ronald Acuna, it took him over a year to really re, re, rediscover himself as a player after he tore his ACL. Yep. He tears his ACL in 21. 22 was as fine as a year goes, but you know he had to miss time. He wasn't 
Um, you know, I think some of it was still even mentally getting back to trusting your body. And then, you know, 23 is one of the greatest seasons in the history of baseball. Not to say that Miles would put together one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen. Not to say that it's out of his realm of possibility. I really want to see what his 2024 looks like, wherever that is. It'd be great if it was here. If it's somewhere else, you know, bless it. Again, you need a ride to the airport, whatever you need, man. Thank you for your service for those years. Um, I hope it's not the East because if he magically just not even magically, but if he gets 100% back to what he was, I don't want to have to deal with him in the East. Yeah. And I'd be very interested to see what he looks like in Europe um, and what kind of offers he would get yeah. because he's so physically dynamic and can be such a physically dominant player. Mm-hmm. Absolutely true. Uh, for the record, those three contracts in Nashville are the only three that are over a million dollars. So you're, you're talking about really slanting three players, Mukhtar, Sturridge, Zimmerman, sorry, four. Mukhtar, Zimmerman, Sturridge, Leal. Those are the only four, but there's a big gap between those first three and Randall Leal, who makes a million dollars. Julian, by the way, in Columbus had a base salary of 884 and total compensation hey, 930. Hey, man, let, hey, you want to talk about Julian for a minute, though? Because I know, you know, Nick trying to set everything on fire. Six, <laughs> um, hey, Julian got, yeah, has been a bad go, man. I mean, I know, like, the, the DC was a weird time for him. Again, DC, again, cannot open a jar of peanut butter without blowing their hands off. Nope. They just. DC's got to pick a manager, by the way, and so let's hey, let's 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 light this inmate and toss it to the water while we're Bruce Arena, the DC. Bruce Arena, the DC. Let's do it. He's back. <laughs> he's back off the he's off the exempt list. He's back available. But Bruce Arena in DC, I swear to God, he's going to try and drop ten goals on New England and Curtis Alfo, just out of spite. It'll be uh-huh. beautiful. Um, but hey, man, Julian got paid. Yeah. Like he got over seven hundred thousand a year. Yeah. He just got another ring. Yeah. Like, there's a lot worse fates. And I get I get it. Like, he got moved really without discussion with him. And had the weird thing and go to D.C. D.C. moves him um, out to Vancouver. He wants to be back east. He comes back east. He's making 700000 or more a year and gets his ring. Yeah. Could have been a lot worse, and now he gets a chance to go see if he can get a big deal from somebody else. I know the early reports are that Miami's interested in him. I think you just got to put him in the right position to succeed Correct. because of his defensive liabilities yes. if you play him as a right back. But man, you put him as a wing back, and yeah. you give him a little bit of you give you give him like, especially a team like Miami where you're already going to have eight people around Messi at all times. Yes, and you let him go out there and not be the guy. Not even be the second guy. A guy. But be that guy pinging in early crosses, pinging in cutbacks on the right hand side where he doesn't have to win a bunch of like stagnant 1v1s where he can go and transition. I don't hate that for him at all. Yeah. Then he gets to reunite with Tata and someone who knows how to best use him uh, in, in a situation like that. So uh, we'll keep an eye on, on Miami. Keep an eye on. If he does that, he'll watch him rack up like. Watch him rack up, you know, double-digit assists, just hitting the same ball, Nick, that we've seen mm-hmm. people hit to Messi, where Messi sprints into the box and then takes those, like, four little, almost like if you've seen a cornerback get into their their their, their cradle and their, their pedal back, where he just kind of cradles and pedals back right to the penalty spot and waits for the cutback. The same goal that Messi's been scoring for years. Uh, watch Gressel get, like, double-digit assists just hitting cutbacks to Messi at the penalty spot. Yeah, yeah, matter of time, guaranteed. I mean, it's it, when you think about when you think about Gressel's time here. Think about how Tata had to to you know buttress him as a player, right? So you had you had Franco Escobar directly behind him, right? And yep. then you had Darlington Nagby essentially cover his you know sort of I, I, you know if you're looking at it like a clock, you know, from like, from, I would say nine to about seven, 
was about where he would be. You know, and anytime Grussell went to go turn, there was a chance to lose the ball. He just dropped it to Nagby, and Nagby would carry it across the field and kick it out to uh, you know to Barco and yep. you know restart the attack. But you had to support him in in such a way that allowed him if, in that three five two to be the more vertical of the wing backs. Garza would be more of the you know on the backside. Uh, so it would be kicked at an angle where Gressel could move forward with ease. Garza would be back. So that back line of three could then morph into a back line of four, if it had to very quickly. And Garza had the ability and the speed to burst forward when he needed. Right. But you never wanted Gressel to be the guy to be doing one-on-one defending. No. Um, That is, that does not mean that he is a bad player. It, Every player has their strengths and weaknesses. He his strength in delivering those crosses and delivering those assists, I think, would be better served in Miami than it would be just about anywhere else. Um, but at the same time, you know he's uh, he's going to be finding his market value here as well and and dc i mean good god yeah i think Jarrett nailed it you know you can't <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't hold him i don't hold anyone responsible for what happened to DC. <laughs> right exactly and and i think that we have to be fair on that right it, it's it's i mean it is so mind-bending to see what that team has become Oof. especially for those of us of a certain age who watched dc just steamroll everybody for so many years and then to watch him now be like wow is it, you guys have sort of become like the wily e. coyote of mls man like this yep. is you know it's like that offense by acme yeah it is it really is it, it is you know you, you make bad choices hiring managers you hire just you know bust of players at the bust of players and i mean okay great but um my opinion has been for a very long time and remains that Lennon is by far yep. a in totality mm-hmm. a better player for Atlanta yep. than Gressel. Yep. Uh, I, you know, if you're talking about a team that had defensive lapses, which mm-hmm. Atlanta did, I don't think anybody can argue with that. Yep. Um, especially in the first half of the season, I don't. Lo- I don't look at this and say at any level that Gressel would have made that better. Nope. <laughs> so. You know, the work rate of Lennon, um, you know, is, is I think, you know, second to none in that one. I think it clears by a margin. I think that, um, you know, he, there's more positive areas covered with Lennon's performance than, than what we would get from a reunion between Gressel and Atlanta. But, it, it, Jared, go ahead. Go ahead. Vancouver to Columbus. I mean, he, he, he skipped over the mountain. He got us into Colorado or, or mm-hmm. Salt Lake. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah then, yeah, send him, uh, send him down to Miami. Actually, don't send him to Colorado. That's not really fair to anybody. <laughs> yeah, Andrew wow. Jukin, by the way, moved to Chicago. We have the proof in the photos. Colorado is a beautiful I, state with beautiful people mm-hmm. and prairie dogs that have the plague. I mean, that's... That's the nicest thing I can say about that stadium. Absolutely Perfect. correct. Yes. Well, Doctor Doctor Wifey got very angry at me when I was making fun of the Rapids uh, bubonic plague prairie dog problem. She because she then she don't go to Colorado. Well, she well, you have to understand something is that Doctor Wifey went and got her first. She got her undergrad and first masters at the University of Colorado. Um, and so go buffs, all that fun business, but she also lived out in Colorado for a significant period of time. And so I'm like, LOL, the prairie dogs and the plague. (laughs) She goes, well, of course the prairie dogs have the plague, Uh you know, (laughs) but you know, you gotta look, look, a fine state with fine people. I love you, honey. Please don't come home and, you know, hit me with a large object or anything, please. Yes. Uh, one more thing before we go. Uh, actually, you know, what, what is the show without uh, doing something like, something like this 
before we before we get out of here. And it's it's been a while, but we get to do this. Officially official, Sandro Schwartz has been named the new head coach at Red Bulls. Uh, for those of you that don't know Sandro Schwartz, and I'm sure that's a majority of you, uh, coaches uh, FC Eschborn, Mines, second team, Mines, first team. That takes us to 2019. True success at Dinamo Moscow for uh, about a year and nine months, where he was 31, 9, and 18, won 53% of his matches. Then he was last at Hertha, where he was 5, 8, and 16, and lasted less than a year. And so Red Bulls believe that Sandro Schwartz is going to be their new successful head coach as he has just been announced officially, officially in all of their news. Uh, Jarrett, last thoughts before we go. I was also reminded that Chris Harvest is going to be in Colorado this year. And <clears throat> I don't think it's going to be pretty. No. Um, Chris Armas, by many accounts, seems like a really good dude. Like, like, it doesn't seem like everywhere he's gone that he has been, like, reviled or anything. Like, it seems like, seem, seems like people like him as a person. Yeah. Um, and it, it, you want to root for people like that. Yeah. Colorado's going to be a mess. And if you're going to, I want to see if they're patient enough to make that work. Because if you're going to give him that gig in Colorado, you have to give him a lot of runway, like yes. multiple years to mm-hmm. build that project in that way. You cannot flip a switch and no. just turn into a, a baby bulls, you know, pressing team. It's, it's going to be, that's, it's going to be, Colorado needs this anyway, but you could, you're going to have to give a long runway and time to see if that project works because what are you going to do fire him and bring somebody else in what exactly. what, what, do you, what are you what are you trying to achieve because you've been floating around in basically petrified jam for the last few years anyway it's not like you're missing anything might as yeah. well give him time yeah uh nick last thoughts before we go and then you get to send us home uh one thing to keep in mind with all these with you know manchester united fans you're understanding this now um, the same thing with all this Red Bulls mess. It is a culture. You're not buying a system. You're buying a culture that takes a long time to build. And the sooner people start realizing the difference between culture and system, uh, the, the, the better off a lot of these executives and sports franchises and sports, uh, entities will be. So good luck to Mr. Armis. Uh, good luck creating that culture especially mile high, have fun doing those wind sprints, baby. Mm -hmm. Uh, Same thing with Ajax folk, you know, any of the Ajax uh, coaching tree people, it's the same thing. That's why it's not working at at Man United because you're not buying into the culture. Anyway, kids, uh, don't step on down power lines. Uh, Don't, uh, you know, especially if you see any frozen water, don't go walking on frozen lakes and whatnot. Don't do any of that mess. No. Nope. Instead, make smart decisions, like call our friends at Eliminize for go. all of your odor needs and whatnot, uh, and then make smart decisions, and we love you all very much. And I don't know about the SDH in Birmingham. I haven't heard anything about the, our plans on that. January 27th. we got six weeks to figure it out. So on that note, power hour from D.C. tomorrow, maybe a little longer. Depends on the hotel and when i got to catch a plane. i got to go catch a plane now. We'll do it again tomorrow. For Nick, for Jarrett, it's me. We're back. Hi.